Chapter 1095 of One Piece has already been released, and this chapter is seriously dark. In this chapter, we got to see Kuma's emotional past and a glimpse of the long-awaited God Valley incident. At the beginning of the chapter, there is another reader request cover page showing a monkey running away with Buggy's nose and Buggy chasing after it. We know that Oda-sensei often gives us hints about upcoming events in these cover pages. So based on this cover, we might soon see a reunion between Luffy and Buggy. So, friends before we begin the chapter, I'd really like it if you could click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Many of you watch the videos but forget to do that. Kindly support my work and help me reach 1000 subscribers by the end of this year. As we saw in the previous chapter, there was an announcement within the Marines that Saint Saturn is coming to Egghead Island. All lower ranking Marines were ordered to leave the area. Same in this chapter also. A Marine gives the order that Saint Saturn has arrived on Egghead Island. Rear Admirals and Captain Rank Marines are told to stay behind, while lower ranking Marines are ordered to retreat. This is because the lower ranking Marines may not be able to handle the presence of Saint Saturn. All the Marines who were left there started running away in fear of Saturn, and they were discussing among themselves why Saturn has come here. Some Marines were saying that they have only seen a picture of Gorsi. Someone else was asking what that flash like lightning was. One Marine said that we usually see an Admiral in Celestial Dragon, but this is even above them. Another Marine was speculating whether Saturn came here directly from Mary Geoise. We also know that these are low-ranking Marines, and they had never seen a member of Gorsi before. They are seeing a Gorsi for the first time. After that, the scene shifts towards Saturn. After that, Sanji asks Bonnie, Bonnie, what are you doing? There, apart from Sanji and his group, there are also Marines present, who witness Saint Saturn being stabbed. One of the Marines says that Saint Saturn is the leader of this world, and you have attacked him. After this, they are about to attack Sanji and his group with guns. But at that moment, Saturn scolds all the Marines and tells them to stay calm. Saturn also says that if he wanted, he could have easily dodged Bonnie's attack but he deliberately didn't. Following this, we see Saturn using the same attack on Bonnie that he used on that Marine soldier, which had caused the Marine's head to explode. However, this time, Bonnie's head doesn't explode, but she gets injured due to the attack. She is about to fall away from Saturn. But Saturn grabs her with his hands and starts squeezing her. Saturn, in front of Sanji's eyes, is doing all this with Bonnie. So how will our Sanji stay quiet? Sanji moves towards Bonnie to save her, and that's when Saturn attacks him as well. Due to this attack, Sanji also gets injured. Many people would be shocked to see this because Sanji's willpower is quite strong. We know that Sanji's ability to withstand damage is the highest among the Straw Hat crew. However, Saturn's single attack still managed to injure Sanji. This is just a glimpse of Saturn's power. After that, Saturn removes the sword from his chest, which Bonnie had stabbed into his chest. Here, we see that the injury Saturn received from the sword slowly starts to heal on its own, and all the people who witness this are left in shock. Here, we learn that Saturn also has the ability to regenerate. We were thinking that Gorse would be strong, but so strong that they also have the ability to regenerate. This is beyond comprehension. I'm thinking that if Gorse is this strong, how strong will Amusama be? After this, we see that all the marines standing there discuss among themselves that this is the right time to capture Vegapunk. But in response, Saturn shouts at all the marines, telling them to stop, calling them fools, and saying there's no need to rush because these people can't escape anywhere. After this, Saturn tells Kizaru that this time, he also took a bit more time to complete his mission. In response, Kizaru apologizes to Saturn, saying he has no excuse and he adds that he won't be able to move for a while. So, we assume that Luffy's punch was quite powerful, which is why Kizaru can't move. After hearing Kizaru's words, Saturn looks at Luffy and says he can understand why. After saying this, Saturn is about to attack Luffy, but Frankie extends his arms to save Luffy. Upon this, Saturn says that yes, he can understand that you have a rather strong crew. After hearing this, Frankie becomes even happier because he realizes that there are world leaders behind his captain head. Saturn then says that Straw Hat Luffy and Jewelry Bonnie, you both will also be part of this battle, which was quite unexpected. All right, that's fine, considering you're surrounded on all sides on this island. Even if, by some stroke of luck, you manage to escape from this island, I will definitely be interested in seeing it. After this, Saturn tells Vegapunk that he should be ashamed for betraying them. He also thanks Vegapunk for his significant contribution to entire military. Then, Saturn says, let's see who wants to face a terrifying death first. We want you all to regret going against the world government. Saturn also mentions that people tend to do something more when they are told not to do it. After saying this, Saturn squeezes Bonnie's forcefully, making her split blood from her mouth. After seeing this Sanji begged for to stop doing that. Frankie wondered why everyone isn't doing anything to save Bonnie. He even admit that he can't move either as if something was keeping him down. 
Vegapunk replied that if he wasn't using technology then it must be his devil fruit ability. While Saturn was squeezing her Bonnie was saying you killed my father. Then Saturn realized that she was referring to Kuma. And he even mentioned that Kuma was born to be a slave. And we also got to know the lineage of Kuma. He was descendant of people who committed a grave sin against the world. Saturn described that Kuma is the only survivor of the extinct race Buccaneer. After hearing this Vegapunk was shocked, which we can assume that Vegapunk was not aware of. After hearing this, Bonnie also remembered something that Kuma had told her, that when he was a child he wanted to be hero like Mika, something who could save people from suffering and grant their freedom. Kuma's childhood dream explains why he became a revolutionary. In the next panel we can Marines prepare themselves to fire, and Saint Saturn told all the Marines to aim for Bonnie's head. Oh, my goodness, this is really scary. We see Bonnie recalling Kuma's wish to live like the Liberation Warrior Nika. Bonnie then asked, Nika, in a questioning manner. Kuma confirmed and said he has always admired that person. We can see Kuma dancing with young Bonnie. While imitating Joy Boy's pose and the legend says Nika used to join in with laughter, following the same rhythm. Sanji calling Bonnie to come to her senses. Meanwhile, Vegapunk is telling the Marines to stop because Bonnie is just a kid. Bonnie's memories continue. With a younger Bonnie asking Kuma if she would be free too. Kuma answered yes with a smile on his face. Next, we're about to dive into one of the most exciting flashbacks in One Piece history, something we have been eagerly waiting for many years. We're going back in time 47 years to the Sorbet Kingdom in the South Blue region. In that kingdom, a newborn baby boy has just arrived, and his parents is happy to meet him. That child happens to be our revolutionary hero, Kuma. After his birth, Kuma's father expressed some concern to the doctor who delivered the baby. The doctor happily reassured Kuma's father that he wouldn't disclose anything about the baby's blood, and from the very start, he was a very happy baby. Some time later, that same doctor hurried to Kuma's father and urgently told him that he and his family needed to leave right away because there were government agents in the hospital. Distraught and in tears, clap, Kuma's father apologized. When captured, he pleaded them to only take him since he was the one with the buccaneer blood. His wife was a normal human, so he begged them to let her wife and his son go. In the next picture, we can see that Clap was badly hurt, and his wife was telling Kuma that everything will be fine. As Kuma grew up and learned to walk, his unique buccaneer bloodline made him capable of lifting incredibly heavy objects. We then see a young Kuma being badly beaten by a celestial dragon for being slow. He was then threatened with death by celestial dragon for crying too loudly. After being reunited with his father, Kuma's father questioned how his son was doing. With a smile Kuma told his father that he was lucky because his master was so kind to him. Clap told Kuma about his mother had died and she's in a better place now. After hearing this Kuma cried out loudly. His father reminded him that he is strong and his son would be able to survive. He told Kuma to be brave and bear it for him. Kuma didn't understand and questioned why death isn't much easier. Even his father told him about the warrior of liberation will come and save him. Who is none other than the sun god Nika. Clap told Kuma that the name of Nika had been passed down through Buccaneer folklore for generation. In addition he told Kuma that Nika would arrive to take him out to see where he would be free under the sun. He mentioned how Nika always smiles. His father even said that the people never fail to laugh when they hear his drum beat, and made the same sound. Out of nowhere, a celestial dragon suddenly appeared and shot a bullet at Clap, causing Clap to die. Seriously I didn't expect it Kuma backstory to be sorry guys I don't have a word for this. Seriously the chapter has given right title. Next, we jump 38 years into the future in the West Blue, where God Valley is. We see a celestial dragon thanking his fellow celestial dragon for their patience. They had all gathered for an event that only comes around once every three years. He encouraged them not to miss their chance to participate in the native cleansing festival. We can even see a six treasure boxes which is looking similar to the box that Shanks has stolen from CP0 agent. They decided the tournament to be held on a country unaffiliated with the world governments, and that country in none other than God Valley. The name of the location was considered blasphemous given by God themselves, and that place was rich of natural resources, and this land world government had just annexed and used it as their traditional human hunt. The king of God Valley quickly expressed his disgust at their plans to hunt his people for sport. In response, he was killed by a swordsman with crescent-shaped hair, Saint Garling. Someone told Saint Garling to hold because he had started hunting before the buzzer. His fellow Celestial found it hilarious, and Celestial ladies were fawning over him. The king of the country had already been killed because of this Saint Garling was docked by 10,000 points which was expected for one of the front-runner to make it hard. Garling claimed that he needed a handicap to keep things interesting. In the next panel we get to see that all the celestial dragon had apparently gathered even additional people to be hunted along with the natives. 
One of the Celestial Dragon mentioned that these salves are notorious troublemakers and sinners. And once the tournament will begin we will hunt them down like a rabbits. Then we see Saint J. Garcia Saturn who is still looked the same. One of the agent was informing him about the kid tried to escape was from Buccaneer race. Then we see Kuma had been captured by his fellow slaves. They were angry at him for being selfish to run alone. They all were placed in groups of 10 for collective punishment. If he got away, they would be killed. Then just we seen young Ivankov calling those kid who was beating Kuma. He recognized Kuma to be the star of the show as he was buccaneer since Kuma carries the blood of giants within him. Kuma has no idea about the Ivankov was talking about. Along with Ivankov her younger sister was with her, and her name is Jenny. While eating meat Jenny told that her big bro Eva is pretty big too. She joked that only his head was huge. Then Ivankov questions why they all had such a hopeless looks on their faces. He insisted that he wanted to continue leaving and ask others what they all plans to do. With this the chapter ends here. This chapter was seriously one of the best chapter. In this not only Oda Sensei introduces a new character and he even killed him sooner. For me this chapter was seriously one of the darkest chapter. What all your thought about this chapter comment down below. See you guys in the next video.